Hey folks, Tom here. Welcome to Saber Academy. Welcome back. Uh, this is our Tuesday night LED Saber class. I wish everybody was here. I really do. But we can't. Um, so before anybody gets upset, I'm here alone. I drive from my house to here. Never talk to anybody. Never see anybody else. I come right in here. I leave here and go home. It's pretty close to my house. Uh, gives me an opportunity to really get out with you guys and get us connected a little bit more than we would if I was in my basement. I wouldn't have a lot of room, so I got plenty of room here. Hopefully you guys do as well. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Remember a couple things. Like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel, and shoot me a message. Thank you for all the feedback I got earlier last, last week's classes. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I will tailor craft the second half of these classes to the feedback that you guys sent. So thank you, Joe, and a bunch of others that, that sent me some notes and thoughts and questions. Uh, happy to you know impart whatever I can to that. And if I don't have the answer, I'll get one of my guys or I'll get someone else and we'll, we'll get those answers to you. If I can incorporate it into the workout like we're in tonight, I will absolutely do that. So with that, I'm gonna lower this volume a little bit because I have a feeling I'm gonna be a little loud in this class louder than I was in the long sword yoga class at six o'clock. If you have not dialed into that and not uh, participated, do it. It's a lot of fun. It's only 30 minutes. Uh, we use some really cool poses. I don't care if you have a long sword or not. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you get moving and get out and start doing because everything we practice there is applicable here and everything we practice here is applicable in any other sword art that we do. It's all fundamentals. Uh, it's footwork. It's body alignment. It's improving your core and building your core up. So we're going to do some conditioning tonight. Um, got to pull my cheat sheet up here because I actually made a cheat sheet for me tonight, so I'm not bringing it as I always do. Um, we're going to do a lot of uh, conditioning for the first maybe third of the class. So do it. Participate. Uh, if you can't do 20, do 10. If you can do 10, do 11, right? Always push yourself that one extra. So we're going to start with our standard and regular uh, sun salutation, the stretching routine we do. It's for every class. So feel a little farther shoulder width apart. Hopefully our camera will work and continue to work for the full class today. It did last week. I'm hoping this one does too. Up to the ceiling. Down to the floor, toes, knees, ankles, whatever you can reach. Walk forward, a downward dog. Push your heels toward the ground. Dive down, roll up. Up into plank. At the end of this class, we're going to hold plank for a minute. Sorry for those who are in lungs in the yoga class. I'm going to be feeling it too. We're going to hold plank for a minute at the end of class. Left foot up. Get a nice stretch. Back, right foot, and back. Chin to your chest, head between your arms. Back in the downward dog. Walk it forward, stay in a squat. Roll up, nice and slow, all the way to the ceiling. Stay on your tiptoes. Wobbling is good, I'm wobbling a lot tonight. Out to the walls. Stay on your tiptoes. Really reach out and bring it down. Ready? All right. So, jumping jacks, sit ups, push ups. Reverse that. Push ups, then sit ups. Then we're going to do a lot of footwork tonight. Uh, we're going to do some new cuts with the footwork drills. We're going to do cuts from a new guard. We're going to do our, our guard form. Um, we're going to do some footwork drills like we did last Thursday, but with those with the descending cuts, today we're gonna to do horizontal high cuts. So we're gonna incorporate that into the footwork drill, and then we're gonna talk and go through um, high guard a little bit more, and then the hanging parry and a counter attack for hanging parry. So it's a lot, we'll see what we can get through. I wanna to try to keep these to about an hour. Um, let's try, all right, so let's start off. Jumping jacks, 20 jumping jacks, your pace, your count, if, again, if you can do 25, do 25. If you can do 50, do 50. Uh, if you can do 20, 
10, 5, you know, do what you can do. So, 20 jumping jacks. sometimes going slower uh, will give you a different workout than going fast so you can do the same 20 jumping jacks super fast and get a great cardio and burst of that that uh, movement or you can go nice and slow and actually focus on your core and the movements as well so you're gonna get more different things out of it so never feel like you're too tired to go fast don't go fast go slow so 20 push-ups uh, knuckles are not your call try to keep your elbows back toward the back don't wing your elbows out so 20 push-ups. Ten. Twenty. Push-ups are super important, right? And I'll always stop to give everyone a chance to catch up and complete your 20. Uh, Push-ups are an amazing total body exercise because not only are you working your core, you're also working your shoulders. Depending on where you put your hands, you're working your chest, you're working your lats. Um, you know, every upper body muscle group and you know, I'd argue that you can kind of put your legs into it a little bit as well. So push-ups are great, right? Your goal for a day, hey listen, 100 push-ups every day. If you break that up into two sets of 50, four sets of 25, it's really up to you, right? But you'll find you can do more and more as you do it. If you want to do it on your knuckles, great. Um, focus on the first two, right? Down, up. Uh, knuckles are a great push-up. And uh, actually gives you a little bit more of a range of motion because you're literally grabbing that extra two or three inches. And you're also not putting a little unneeded stress on your wrist by having your hands bent. So knuckles are a great way to do push-ups. If you've never done knuckle push-ups, try it. I'd recommend doing it on your knees first and in a comfortable floor. This floor kind of sucks for knuckles. It's a rubber floor, it's very hard. Uh, if you're gonna do push-ups on your knees, absolutely perfect. Make sure you give yourself some room. You don't wanna do them here because you're not really working anything. You wanna give yourself some room, lean forward, Make that so your core has to work to keep you up. Bend down, push back up. Again, the more you can lean forward, the better, the more you're gonna get out of the push-up. When you're up too far or even back, you know, you're really not engaging your core at all in that movement. So again, lean forward, create that little bit of an angle. The deeper you can, the better you will get. I would even cheat, put your arms a little farther back, right, so you're behind your shoulders. So you really do have to work a little bit more to get that push up. But again, you do whatever method and whatever one works best for you at this stage in your workout. Sit-ups, 40 sit-ups. Again, I'm gonna say this, uh, my preference, and you may have a coach, awesome, to give you different feedback, that's okay. My preference is I don't like going all the way flat, nor do I like coming all the way forward. At that point in time, from here, once I engage the floor, I've totally disengaged my core, right? So I go to about here, up to about three quarters. So you're going from one quarter to three quarters, right? That way you can kind of keep in uh, continual engagement in your core. So with that, we're gonna do 40 sit-ups. Again, do the number that you can do, push yourself a little bit. Uh, you wanna keep your feet down, great. You wanna keep your feet in the air and do a, a, a compression sit-up. Awesome too, that's what I'm gonna to do today as well. So, 40 sit-ups. catches up and finishes your set you can do setups so many different ways right 
You can do it the way I did, where it was a compression. You can have your feet down and bring your body in, right? I don't like the hands behind the head because you're putting too much stress on your neck. Old school, I grew up that way. That's how I was taught. It's the worst thing for your neck, in my opinion. I'm sure somebody will disagree with me and you can have your opinion too. I like mine. So don't grab the back of your head, right? Keep your hands in front of your body. Keep your hands in front of your body. It will also help you to keep your hands up and in front as we train as well, right? So keep your hands in front. Um, you can do obliques, you can do crunches, right? When I say do 40 sit-ups, it's okay. whatever you choose to do is absolutely cool, right? Just work your core. That's the most important thing. Uh, come do the long sword yoga class with me on Thursday at 6. You'll work your core a little bit more there as well. So, all right. I think everybody probably caught up at this point. Thank you all. Good job. Footwork. Gathering step drill that we do. So, right foot forward, left foot back. Shoulder guard, uh, sorry, shoulder width apart. Step forward, two half steps, turn that back leg, right? Front toes always point to the direction you want to move or the direction you want to cut. Uh, when we're against an opponent, I will always say front foot towards your opponent. You really want to do it in the direction you want to move and cut. I, I should adjust what I say, right? Because if I want to go forward and my front toes are turned left, turned in, and I want my knee to step forward and I step that way, I immediately start putting way too much stress on my knee, right? And it will kill your knees over years of doing it, not too many years, right? So the more you align your body, uh, knees over your instep, toes pointing forward, right? The better you're gonna prolong and build up and really strengthen your legs. All right, enough talking. Single step advance, single step retreat. We're gonna do uh, 10 forward and back. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Switch your sides, left foot forward. Remember, keep your toes pointing forward. These are pulling steps. I'm stepping and pulling myself into position. I'm stepping and pulling myself into position. I'm not jumping forward and back. We'll do those on Thursday. Remind me, somebody, we're doing the pushing steps on Thursday. So 10 up and back. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. This is a great time for you to practice that extra deep retreating step. Little step forward, big step back. Little step forward, big step back. Problem is you're going to end up walking backwards. Just be careful of what's behind you. Switch your feet back. We're going to do two steps forward, two steps back. Sorry, we know that. For those that don't know why I'm shaking my head, you can laugh later. So, right foot forward. 10 up and back. 10 up and back. Ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Switch your feet. Try not to rush through these. One for me, and two for you guys as well. Um, I'm gonna. I, I pulled out a little bit of the Tuesday routine as well into some separate videos. So if you do want to practice these in between the classes. Uh, grab that separate video I just posted, I think it was literally on maybe Thursday night or so. So it's up on our YouTube channel where you guys are right now. So left foot forward, two steps up, two steps back. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, 
8, 9, 10. Awesome. So, footwork. One more thing on this before we drop out of, out of it. You'll see sometimes when I do mine, I actually kind of over exaggerate the step, right? You'll see my toe go up in the air, my foot go up in the air, I'll land heel to toe, right? It's what I want you to practice, that mechanical rolling forward, landing on that heel and rolling in, right? Uh, you'll see, I, I do it all the time. Got a good picture of the Arnolds. I'm like sitting here, ready to attack, and uh, as Eric will tell me, I was foot first, body and blade was second, so it was a bad picture. It was a good picture to catch, because we fixed that, that, that little flaw that I have. Uh, all right, so let's do our cut drill. Form, not drill, we'll do some drills in a second. So grab your saber, grab your broomstick, grab your PVC tube, whatever you got. Uh, I wanna try to stay in frame here on the left camera. So we're gonna do our eight cuts. I think we've done this before. Most of you that have been here, I know we've done this before, but those that are new, uh, it's eight different cutting movements that we do forward. We do a turn and a comeback repeat. So it's a linear form up and back, repeating the same eight movements. Uh, I will probably shorten a little bit of my step toward the front of the camera. I want you guys to take good, dedicated steps forward. Shoulder width apart, you start in what I call natural position. One arm on the sword. I'm gonna go around, there's gonna be big shoulder cuts. We do this two different ways. Shoulders, and, I'm sorry, elbow cuts, shoulder cuts, and then elbow cuts. Uh, first one's gonna be all big shoulder movements. So around your head, one. I'm gonna do full cuts with the shoulders, half cuts with the elbows round two and again let the cut pull you forward now we're going to do two horizontal cuts three four now we're going to do upward cuts ascending cuts five six straight down seven and then we're going to do a flipping up cut that's with a gathering step forward eight from here, I'm going to step, turn, spin, cut, one, two, horizontal, three, four, five, six, seven, and instead now we're going to do a thrust, eight. Let's do that one more time with the big shoulder cuts. One, two. Horizontal, three, four, upward, five, six, seven, eight, round, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, I tried to stay in frame there for us. Now let's do it at the shoulder. I'm sorry, the elbow. God, I keep mixing that up. So the elbow cuts are a little bit different. Again, shoulders, I'm doing these big movements over my head. Elbow cuts, I'm doing rotations with the joint at the elbow, which really means my sword isn't necessarily, it isn't necessarily going behind my body like it is with a shoulder cut, which also means I might not throw that cut when I'm out of measure to my opponent. I can gain a lot of distance with that cut I can come in pretty close with the, with the elbow cut as well. Um, but again, it all depends on what you want to throw and what you want your opponent, how you want them to respond. So let's do the same uh, eight cuts, same starting guard. We're gonna keep our sword saber in front of our body and do everything from the elbow pivot. So one, we're gonna end in half cuts. Two, horizontal cut, three, four, five, Whoop. upward cut, six, seven, eight, turn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Face front, feet shoulder width apart, one, Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Turn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool, good job. All right, cup drills. So, like last week, we did a cut drill where we did a start of the middle guard, came down one, retreated step two. We did that 10 times, then we did two steps from guard. One, two, retreating one, two. And we did that. So what I wanna do now is do um, a different guard. We're gonna start with, with a high forward guard, oxen, in the German longsword system, or German system. Um, and we're gonna do a rotational cut for every one of those steps. So, new guard, right foot forward, left foot back, middle guard. What I want you to transition to here is I want you to raise your arms up. So you're pointing your tip at your opponent's eyes. Hands are above your head and above your tip. You're not doing this. Your blade is angled down, right? Our cut from here is going to be stepping forward, cut. Stepping back, cut. All right, so we're gonna do that 10 times, then we're gonna switch and go left foot forward and do that 10 times, then we're gonna do two steps. So, again, right foot forward, middle guard. Transition up. What am I doing when I transition up? Sidebar, sorry. I'm opening up my outside line. I want them to attack my outside line so that when I step in, they're over here moving and I can step across and strike, All right? So by doing this, I'm really giving them my outside line. Yes, I can, because a lot of things you can do from that guard. Uh, but again, from, a, from an invitation perspective, if I go into that guard, I really want them to attack that outside so I can step out with my strike. There's a lot of conversations about where is the pivot on the turn, right? Am I pivoting it on my front hand certainly not pivoting it on my backhand, right? That just takes too much time. But what I actually want to do is try to pivot it a little bit farther out front. So I actually want to virtually move that pivot point down the blade. So as you're here, focus on pivoting around that front point, which will actually get the cut there quicker. I hope that translates okay. Play with it a little bit. So let's do the drill. Right foot forward, left foot back, middle guard. Transition to high forward guard. 10 cuts, stepping up and stepping back is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I knew I was pivoting on my front hand on all those, so. Before we go to the left side, I want to do two steps forward. So, right foot forward, left foot back, high guard. Two steps forward with two different cuts, rotating for each one, stepping back two steps. We do 10 of those. Nice and slow. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, ten. Missed nine there, but we did it. Ten. Uh, it's a good advancing cut, right? Justin loved, used to love doing this. He's since changed his tune because we've been probably teasing him about it too much. We used to call him an angry lawnmower, right? Because he would come forward. Bang, bang, bang. And they were intense. And he was coming at you and they were good solid hits. So he was a good person to fight against to learn how to do these high blocks to parry those attacks coming in and be able to go quickly back and forth and find that measure and wait for that counter attack moment. With that, let's now switch sides. Left foot forward. And we're gonna do another 10 with one step and then 10 with two steps. So middle guard. Up into high forward. 
We're going to step forward and back 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you're doing these cuts, right, usually you want to do them in a combination wherever you're going, you know, fade, middle cut, high cut, high cut. Um, just be careful you're not closing your back foot. I do it all the time, right? I'll step in and as I cut, I'll close that back foot, which I don't want because in other words, I want to do a counter cut, a second cut to the opposite side. And by closing my line, now I've got to step way over here to get around for that second cut. So don't close that second line. Think of that triangle footwork drill that almost every martial art uses, right? For a reason, you're creating a triangle, which is a nice solid base. So from here, strike, strike. I still have that triangle of footwork. I'm not closing my step and making a box. Yes, I can do a four point box step, or I can do a three point triangle step. Triangle step. One, my head's out of the way each time. We talked about that on last week, right? It's a quicker step, but it doesn't restrict my lateral movement as much as the, to be able to go in the opposite direction as much as the uh, box step kind of does. I know it's called a box step, but I'm calling it a box step from now on. So uh, that being said, all right, let's do two steps forward, two steps back. Left foot forward, middle guard. Transition up to high. One, two. One, two, don't cheat yourself, go full swings. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, why my abs are hurting on Friday morning last week. I had a stomach ache? No, it's because I did freaking 200 sit-ups and push-ups the day before. It pays off, trust me. And you all know that. Those of you that here, you know, it pays off. And very quickly, too, right? Push-ups and sit-ups, again, you don't need any weights to do them. You don't need much space to do them. The more you do them, the quicker your body will develop, and it will get easier and easier as you go forward. Give yourself time, though, right? Don't try to do them every day. They're not everyday exercises. You don't work your body out and muscle parts out every single day. Your muscles need time to re relax and rebuild. Push-ups and sit-ups are no different, right? Just like I'm doing bench presses, I wait a day. I don't do chest every day or shoulders every day. You don't do push-ups and sit-ups every day. Pick two days a week, three days a week, every other day, however you want to work it. Do your sit-ups and push-ups. Do them consistently. Do them for a month. I guarantee you, after a month, you will feel different. Full stop. All right, All right. so 20 push-ups, flip over, 40 sit-ups, your pace. I'm going to do knuckles this time. your sit-ups and you do the amount you can do right roll over and sorry push-ups roll over and do your sit-ups so 40 sit-ups your pace your count your stock
have some time. Stop at one point, make sure you have water. I'm horrible that way, right? If we were all here, I would say go get a drink right now. Um, I'm gonna go run and get a drink right now as well. While you guys are finishing up your sit-ups and push-ups, back in frame yet? Kind of, kind of, here I am. The trick will be not spill this. That's right, we drenched this floor. Y'all saw pictures, I'm sure. In the uh, gear cleaner, the disinfectant antibacterial spray, uh, this floor was just covered. So we really took a lot of time and did a lot of cleaning here in the last month. So I'm looking forward to coming back. Um, I hope we're all back here together. I don't know if I said this at the start of this video or not. I know I said the long sort of one. Kind of blurring with me. I hope we're all back in here sometime in May. I would love that to be the case. I really, really would. Until then, and maybe even after then, we're still gonna keep live streaming these classes. We're gonna start adding on more classes in. Um, might not be only me in here at one time. Uh, you may see some of the other guys that teach in here teaching a class on, on their time as well. Uh, this is an easy trip. I basically leave my house, come here, go back here, go back to my house, right? I want to have this room. I think I said it at the top of the call. Uh, virtual classes will continue. I love these. Uh, I'm becoming very comfortable doing them. We're fixing all the little technical errors as we go. We meet with advice from Phil and a number of others. Um, so uh, keep joining in, right? I'll do this until you all tell me to stop. And no one's going to tell me to stop because I'll keep going anyway. All right. So, hope everybody did 20 sit ups, uh, 20 push ups, 40 sit ups, and you got yourself a drink of water and you're ready to get back into things. Let's continue our discussion um, and drills from last Thursday on the high block. So, the blocking of a downward attack coming at you from your opponent. Let's kind of set the stage here for a little bit. You are across from your opponent. They are in a high guard. They are in a guard where the most probable angle of attack for their blade is to come right down to the top of your head. Again, we're talking angles and probability of attack, right? If I'm in high guard, if I'm in shoulder guard, or if I'm in a high guard, the highest probability for me to the easiest attack that I'm gonna throw is straight down to the top of the head, right? If I'm in a shoulder guard or I'm in a high shoulder, straight down toward the top of the head to the side of the head. Can I do other attacks from those guards? Absolutely, right? I can be in high guard, step in and come up and under, do an ascending cut. I can step out and cut. I can step off to the side and do the horizontal cut from a high end. Absolutely, right? Every guard we practice, there are multiple attacking vectors and attacking techniques you can throw. If you're against an opponent that is in a certain guard, just look at that from a, what's gonna be the most likely guard, the highest probability of the attack they're gonna throw at me. That's the one I wanna plan for, because that's probably the one that can be thrown with the least effort in the shortest time, which means it's traveling the shortest distance to me, right? If I'm here in high guard, and I wanna do an ascending cut, right? Yes, it's gonna be slower, but it's only slower because it's traveling a further distance to get to me, right? It's going here, under, even if I keep that all above the torso, it's still traveling a longer distance to get to my head versus straight down. And I'm not trying to do that faster. Speed's an illusion, right? It's distance traveled. So if I travel a short distance, it's gonna appear like I'm moving incredibly fast with my blade. If I couple that with a step into measure, it's even going to appear like I'm moving that much more fast, that much faster, because again, I'm traveling a shorter distance, right? So if my opponent's in a high guard across from me, I'm going to say quickest. You know what I'm saying, the shortest distance, right? The quickest cut they're going to throw is going to be straight down. So that's what I'm going to plan for first. If they do other cuts, I should have more time to address and re respond to those actions because their cut is traveling, their attack is traveling a longer distance. In theory, some people are super fast at doing it, can really lever and, and, and 
uh, leverage the mechanics that they have for their blade and their body, so they can, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's always somebody who's going to be faster at this than someone else, and that's cool, right? So, every exception to the rule, anything any of us tell you is always a well, but, well, you know, we always joke, there's five of us here, you're going to get five different opinions, and they're all going to be right. Depends on the situation. So, for now, let's go through this. So, my opponent is in high guard. Or shoulder guard. They're in a high guard where the most likely attack is going to be straight down to the top of my head. What's my response? They go into that guard. I have two responses. I can counter with an, a guard with a, yeah, I'll say this, with a guard that forces them to do something. So if they're going to high guard, I can counter with a high forward guard, right? Or even a middle guard that forces them, they can't step into my blade because at this point, they're, my, they walk forward, they're gonna run themselves through. I think we did this a couple weeks ago, right? Standard stuff. But I'm also not encouraging them to hit me. I'm basically just keeping them at bay. As much as it's a very direct guard to be in, it's a very defensive guard to be in, right? So what I'm basically saying is I want them to try to hit me with the, guard, with the attack they want to throw so I can be prepared for it. So my opponent goes into a, a high guard of some kind, I have a couple options, right? I can stay in the middle guard and be very defensive and kind of force them to directly action my blade to move it to hit me or to step here to hit me, right? They can step off the line of attack that we talked about last week. But I want to encourage them. So for today's drill, I'm going to encourage my opponent to strike to my head. Easiest, not, not easiest way. One way of doing that is to drop into a low guard. We do that as part of our drills here. So I'll be in the middle guard or a direct guard, I'm gonna drop down into a low guard. Essentially, it just means I'm lowering my tip, opening up this high line, opening up this space to encourage them to step forward and strike me in the head. You know, Rock will, and Eric will bust my chops, maybe call that a fool's guard, a low guard, right? You're either a fool to get into it because you're gonna get hit, or a fool to think you're gonna hit the person who just got into it because they can easily do that upwards kind of barrel flip, flicky cut that we were doing as part of the cut drill. Nevertheless, we're going to go with this scenario. Opponents in high guard or a high guard. I'm in a middle guard. I drop down to a low guard. They're going to strike to the top of my head. So let's do the cutting first. We all get the cutting mechanics. So left foot forward, right foot back, high guard. We're going to get into that guard. We're going to do cut straight down. One. We're going to end in middle guard because if I miss my opponent, I still want to have a a protective area and pros a threat to my opponent. So I don't want to go, because now I'm in low guard and they're going to whack me in the head. Right? So back to high guard, left foot forward, right foot back. Step forward, cut down. Step back, back to high guard. Step forward, cut down. Good. Back to high guard. One more time. Step forward, cut down. Good. Hopefully you all felt how that will feel coming at you. So now you can visualize that attack at you as we practice the defense. The first thing I want to do is stay safe. I don't want to get hit in the head, right? So last week we talked about high, uh, high guard. Inside, which means I'm stepping to the inside area of my body, or outside, where I'm stepping to the outside of my body. First thing I want to do is not get hit, right? So visualize that blade coming down to the top of your head. We're going to go to the inside first. If I step to the inside, don't move, it's going to hit me. If I step to the inside, it's going to miss my head. So one, I'm not going to get hit. Not necessarily safe, but I'm not going to get initial attack. I'm not going to land. So I'm, my left foot is going out. Lateral step. Nine o'clock on the clock. We talked about it last week, right? The clock around you. Step out to nine o'clock. Step out to nine o'clock. See my head move. Right? Good. If I want to go to the outside, front foot goes to 3 o'clock. Actually, I'm kind of almost going to 4, right? 3 would be here. I really have to reach for that lateral step. If you can see the line on my foot, if I was to step out to 3 o'clock, which means laterally across, I really have to step for that. I don't want this to be a super natural step. So my natural movement is going to be here to the side. So it's almost... To you know, four, between four and five o'clock on the clock. So 
set out. Different with the outside set because my back foot's already lined up there, so I'm actually stepping out to nine o'clock. Okay? So, outside step, boom. Strike will come down here. Miss. Great, I don't get hit. I talk about this all the time. Sorry for those that hear this all the time. But I'm not doing anything to change my opponent's strategy or impact or influence my opponent's strategy. If I'm the opponent, I want to strike down, I miss. I want to come back with some kind of counterattack and try to hit them to the side, try to counter to the side, do something where I have a secondary attack. I probably have at least two attacks in my head um, as it is. Without a block or without doing anything and in in, in, in engaging with their blade, I'm doing nothing to change my opponent's attack strategy. So, yes, we're going to score to the inside, make it easier on the step over. Sorry. I'm safe. Now we're going to layer in that high block. We're in middle guard, they're in a high guard. I want to encourage them to hit. I'll drop into a low guard. I may even lean my head forward and really give them a target. All right? They come in for the attack. I step out, raise my hands up. Don't worry about raising the blade up. Try to push the blade up. What you do is end up with this, where I'm at a high angle, catches the blade, and it slides right down over my hands. Don't worry about raising the blade up. Raise your hands up in the air. Matter of fact, this movement is actually advantageous for what we're going to practice next in the hanging parrot. So step up. Raise my hand. I always want the blade over my head in case my opponent tracks my movement, right? They're still engaging with my blade and not my hands or my hilt. Right. Back to guard, back to low guard. Up and out. Low guard, out. Low guard, out. Good, one more time. Middle guard, drop to low, step out, hands up. Good. Back to guard. I hope you're all doing this. I want you to all do it. I don't care how many times you've done it. I've done these guards for decades. Um, it's basics. You've got to learn the basics. If you don't know the basics, you don't have anything else to build off. If you have a good foundation, you got a shitty house. Sorry for the language. There are kids out there. Right? You need a good foundation. Right foot forward. Low guard. We're going to do outside. Step out. Raise my hands up. Back down. Low guard, up, good, cool. This will stop the attack, so then what, right? Uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm moving on the same plane. I'm not advancing into my opponent's space. I'm not retreating away from my opponent's space. I'm actually staying in the plane uh, that I'm in standing in. Yes, I can step forward with these blocks. I can step back these blocks. Um, you can move in every one of the eight directions that our compass, or actually let's say six, right? The radial angle directions that our compass rows, our center logo, shows. You can't. For this drill, I want to stick to lateral, right? Why? Um, doing this in a lateral movement allows me to maintain a certain distance from my opponent where I actually stay out of measure of their blade for a counterattack. Once we get a second person back in here, um, I'll show you that. If you've been in here and done our one-step drills, you've seen it, you've experienced it, right? So, trust me for now. I hate that phrase, but trust me for now. So, up, uh, counter. So, hanging parry is essentially a parry that allows the blade to engage with mine and maintain contact. Remember, the blade's come down. It's now touched my blade. It's maintain contact, so I'm always keeping my blade between me and my opponent, right? And it then allows me, my opponent's energy to come forward so that all I have to do is step out of the way and strike, right? So let's go through that footwork just for the mechanics for that movement. So down to low guard. We're gonna step out into high guard. From here, this foot, my left foot now stays planted. My right foot slides behind as I rotate my blade down and pull on this hip pommel like a lever. Bang. Now, what I, you can see where I'm at. I'm angled to my opponent. I'm kind of between 45 and not. To my opponent, I am back. I am doing left foot forward, middle guard. What you'll find is my opponent is here 
they strike down. Where, they're, where they open themselves up is actually in their wrist area. So when I do this high block, step out, transition down, I'm actually targeting their arm, I'm not targeting their head. That's too close. If I go in too close to target their head, my head is now in range for a counterattack. If I target their wrist, I, my body is out of measure from their counterattack. I hope that makes sense. Let's do this drill one more time. We're gonna do it a few more times. Beware the trainer that says one more time. They never mean one more time. Right foot forward, left foot back, middle guard. Drop to low guard. Step out, high inside block. Pivot, now my left foot stays, just pivots. Pivot that left foot, slide the back foot around, strike down. You are targeting their wrist inside middle guard. Good, let's do that again. Right foot forward, left foot back, up, block, let it slide past, strike. Good, one more time, we're gonna switch sides. Middle guard, drop to low, they attack, up, pivot, strike. And that strike is just a lever action, right? All right, cool, let's go to the outside. You may find one is easier than the other. Everybody's different, and that's cool. I want you to practice both sides, both feet, all the time. The only thing I don't want you to always practice is switching your grip and making left hand forward. We're gonna teach, I'm gonna, I always show everything right hand on top. Um, that one just, I, let's be practical, it makes the class structure easier. I don't say, well, you've got left foot, you've got right hand. Uh, everybody's doing the same thing. As you progress, try it, switch hands, fight with the left. Uh, left hand forward. It's a different feeling, right? So, let's go back to the drill. Right foot forward, left foot back, middle guard. We're gonna drop down to low guard, step out to an outside high block, counter attack, pivot, and close. So step out, right foot now is locked and pivot, swim, strike. I am in right foot forward, middle guard. Let's do that again. Low guard, step out, Strike. Right foot forward. Drop to low guard. That triggers your opponent the attack. Step out. Remember, I'm stepping lateral. Catch their blade. Strike. I'm striking in their hands. Again, because their blade just is here, is now out of my body, is, is safe from their natural just swing across strike. Anyway, right foot forward, middle guard, step out, swing down. Good. Use that. So, the way I always like to say it, and you guys have heard me say this a million times, your right hand is the directional hand, right? And I'm gonna say it both ways. Your right hand kind of pushes forward, it kind of provides the power, it drive, the drive is in your right hand, your top hand. The directional, the rotational angle movements are all coming from your left hand. Right. This is a lever, mechanical device. Your right hand is the fulcrum, the point of, uh, of rotation, the point of pivot, right? The back hand is really pivoting around that front hand, like the cup drill we were doing before. Right? I know I said pivot it farther up on the blade. Start with the hand, pivot it right here. So my arm, you can see my arm doesn't move with each of these strikes. My back hand directs or pulls or pushes the attack. If I try to pivot with the front hand, and I pivot on my backhand, I've got to move an extra 15, 16, 10, whatever the length of your saber is, I've got to move that extra distance around. It's slower, because I'm traveling a longer arc, right? So it's not about how much muscle I can put to my attack to try to make it move faster. Yeah, there are tons of videos of people that can punch super fast, right? I wish I could punch that fast or move that fast. I just can't, right? And, you know, age nothing I never could <laughs> right um, so it's not always about it's not about speed though it's about distance travel right and positioning um, if I want to get to my opponent a little bit faster I might step in a little bit the minute I step in even that fraction of a step I travel less distance if I travel less distance in my attack whether it's with a fist a foot a sword or whatever I'm gonna travel in less time because it's a shorter distance Couple of that with the training that we're doing, the, the, the cardio we're doing, the muscle drills we're doing with our push-ups and other calisthenic exercises and resistance exercises, and you're gonna develop more strength. So you're gonna put that with more intensity or more force. 
and that may help you move faster. Cool. But again, it's the thinking game of I need to step in to move a shorter distance, which means less time, which means it will take less to get to my opponent. So I hope that all makes sense. It will. We'll continue to build on it. We've been building on it here. We'll continue to talk about it. So let's do that drill one more time. Right foot forward, left foot back, middle guard. We're going to do an inside high block counter attack to the wrist. One, two. One more time. Drop the low guard. Inside high block counter attack to the wrist. Two movements. One, two. Good. Outside high block. One, two. Closing my line. Nice, good stance. Right, my foot's pointed towards my opponent. One more time. Right foot forward. Drop the guard. One, two. Good. Cool. I want to emphasize the two beats, and I don't know if we'll talk a lot about it tonight because I want to keep these to an hour. We've got about eight minutes, ten minutes left. If you want to do some closing workout a little bit, calisthenics a little bit more. Um, but I will kind of take it one step farther into a single tempo, talk about tempo for a little bit. So, tempo, right? Tempo, time, Italians have a million words for time, right? But essentially, tempo is the amount of time it takes for me to perform my action. Or the number, or it is not only a measure of time, but it's also a unit of time. So I could, might be the same thing, sorry. Uh, if I do things in two beats, two movements, I could say that's a two tempo movement because this is the time it takes to strike my opponent. One, two, we'll say it's a two tempo movement. So the first tempo is the block. I'm meeting my opponent's strike with a counterattack. His or her strike, my opponent's strike to me is the tempo. They set the tempo, right? So that duration of time, me meeting it with a block, my block is the same tempo as my opponent's attack. So that's one tempo, which means my secondary, my counterattack is a second tempo action. One, two, two tempos. Hope that makes sense, right? Don't try to read into it more than that. Uh, think of a tempo as an action, right? The tricky part is when I can do two things at the same time my opponent's throwing one action. Right? Because remember, my opponent is setting the pace, or the attacker, the initiator, is setting the tempo. Right? I could be the initiator, I mean, I'm setting the tempo, but if my opponent is throwing me a cut, and I want to do a, a, a and I block and counterattack, we just did, one, two, it's a two tempo exercise. Because essentially, at here, their movement is done. I'm doing a second, now I'm becoming the attacker, I'm setting the tempo, and it's a second tempo. So it's a two tempo response. If I do those two movements in the same time frame as my opponent's attack, it is an in tempo response, meaning I'm doing two move two actions in the same time of my opponent's single action. Does that make sense? I hope so. So again, the only thing I'm doing in this is one tempo. Boom, block. Second tempo, now I'm the attacker, right? I start. If I do them at the same time, as my opponent is attacking, I'm stepping out and I'm doing the same action, the same physical movements. Step to the outside, raise my blade up, except instead of catching, I'm letting my blade just act as a guard, a shield, oh, or inside middle guard, or inside up, inverted guard, block, right? Strike. So I'm trying to do that entire flow same time it takes my opponent to strike down. So as they're coming in, I'm stepping, strike. If you notice, it's actually the same. That movement is very similar to the standard descending cut drill that we did. Matter of fact, it's exactly the same movement. It is an inverted, inverted block rotating to a strike. All I'm doing is instead of the flat high block, I'm just letting it flow into the cut movement. So it all ties together at one point, right? What we were practicing last week, this movement, step, step, that's the movement that we're doing. 
High block, strike. High block, strike. Hanging parry. So I'm hanging my, let it hang off the side, strike, rotate around and hit. The trick there is to do it in the same tempo of my opponent's attack. So picture your opponent across from you coming down and striking. I should probably do that. You guys do the movement, I'm gonna attack. Step out, circle around, close the leg, strike down to my arm. I'm gonna face this way since you might get a better view of this. So if I'm in high guard, step forward and attack. You are stepping out, high block, or a hanging parry, slipping around, striking to my arm. If you did it to your outside, you would hit my inside arm. If you did it to your inside, you're gonna hit my outside arm. Let me do that with you. So, attack's coming down. Strike, hanging parry. I'm basically just bringing the weapon up into our inverted block, pulling down the lever, pulling here, right? Strike, closing my guard to a nice guard, ending in middle guard. It's a one tempo exercise. So, one. Essentially the same time they're striking, I'm counterattacking and striking them. So in their time, yeah, yes, it's a little longer to do this, and yes, it might end a little bit different. It's still considered an in-tempo response. So I'm not initiating a secondary attack at the new tempo. I'm moving, avoiding, and striking in the same time of action that my opponent has initiated their attack, right? So it's an in-tempo response. So now we've got two levels to talk through here. Level one, two tempo action, one, Two, to the outside, do this together, right foot forward, left foot back, drop to low guard, step out, one, rotate, down, cut, two, good, let's do the inside, right foot forward, step out, one, rotate, two, good, now let's do it as a one tempo movement, so we're going to go half speed, so as I step out, step out with me, start in middle guard, drop down to low guard. As we step out, we're going to go to the inverted parry, hand up over our head. We're going to pivot, strike down to the wrist. Let's do that again, same side. Drop down, step out, parry, down. Good. One more time, we're going to switch sides. Step out, parry, down. Good. Let's go to the right, outside. Step out, parry, down. I'm making a big circle, right? Now. Essentially doing our cut drill from last week's class. Good. In uh, single tempo, so that two iterations, two levels of attack. Two tempo, tempo action response or response counterattack, right? To a same tempo action where I am avoiding and attacking while they're attacking me. So think of the think about the um, intention there for a second. The first set of actions, I am receiving an attack. I am absorbing that attack. I am counterattacking. Second set, I am avoiding their attack to attack at the same time. Different mindsets, right? Block, counterattack. Avoid, strike, right? Um, we used to put elements against them ages ago, right? But you can see how one is more flow versus one is more hard <laughs> versus flow strike, right? It's a different mindset, right? And I'm not saying favor one or the other. You will all have your way of fighting um, that works for you, but don't ever rule any out. Try them, right? As you're doing this, try and see which feels more natural. Do that, but then focus on the one that doesn't feel natural so you can kind of expand your toolkit and kind of grow and develop as a, as a, as a martial artist. Um, and I say that that way, I'm really picky about the term martial arts and martial arts, right? Um, yes, this is a collection of martial techniques that we apply in a codified, structured way. That is a martial art. We made, from all those great techniques from around the world, we brought them together into this savoring art, and, and that's what we teach, right? A codified system of techniques. That's a martial art. 
being a martial artist means I kind of interpret those techniques. I don't want you to interpret yet. I want you to do the techniques. I still do the techniques, right? But then I want to learn how does my body move, right? Um, do I have a bad hip this week? Maybe, right? My knee might bother me. How do I do the techniques? Maybe I, I have a, a chronic problem and I never can go to this certain side. So I'm going to adapt and adjust. Once I understand the technique, I might have to adapt and adjust that to me. Right? And every single me is different out there. Then you start to become an interpreter of that technique. But be careful you don't do that too early. Right? I, I, I still don't call myself that. Right? I'm just, I just practice. That's what I do. I've been practicing for 30 years, over 30 years. I'm going to always practice until I can't do this anymore. Right? Uh, don't, yeah, I know too many people that, that they'll do it for a couple years. Oh, no, uh, uh, uh. yeah, okay, thanks for making your own style. Good. I'm not, I'm not claiming originality. Thing. This is, we kind of took systems from all over the world and said, what works for LED Saber, right? That's so why we don't use the, uh, try to avoid at least, right, the native name for the stance or the guard or the kamai or the attacking structure or the cut, right? We could. Um, and I, and I, and I, and in the HEMA classes that we teach, we absolutely do because that's part of that system. Here we try to boil everything down to a very simple uh, English language, very structured, very you know basic way of speaking. Um, so where was I going with that? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, practice the fundamentals, then understand how to apply those fundamentals for what you're doing, what you're attacking. Um, so it was around mindset, right? My mindset of block, strike, or my mindset of flow around my opponent's attack and attack. You'll see us do, and many of the fighters here, if you come here and fight with us, you'll learn to do that as well. You'll see us adapt between those two approaches. Cool. There's a third iteration that we're going to get to um, next week, where it's actually a contra tempo or a half tempo or mezzo tempo, kind of an in-between, right? It's not hitting, absorbing, counterattack. It's not avoiding attack. It is, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to attack you before you even finish your attack, right? Very fast, very simple, very direct, very efficient. So the same movement, shoulders, strike. Think of it as strike. So my opponent is coming down. Their arm is now in attacking area. All I'm going to do is rotate and strike their arm. So it's actually I'm attacking my opponent. We'll go through this so you guys can practice it. I don't want to go through it now because we're past the hour already. Uh, so rotational movement, super quick, in between them. Before they even can complete their attack, I'm attacking them first. So it's a very aggressive, um, you know, think enveloping, right? Think fire. Think, think you know, very you know, attacking, aggressive position. Anyway. So I hope that made sense tonight. Let's talk about a little bit what we did. We're gonna close out with a little bit more um, conditioning and we're gonna close out with our stretching routine. Footwork, right? Gathering step is our pulling, pull, pulling step forward, pulling step back. Double advances, double retreats, right? The attacks we did today were at a high line attack. So stepping forward and rotating and working those shoulders. Couple that with a high block. Oh, by the way, yeah, we're here. If I rotate my blade forward when I do the block, I can do a direct hit and a parry. All should tie together, right? Should start clicking. Puzzle pieces starting to click together, dots being connected for you. If not, ask, right? Shoot me a question or two, we'll talk through it. Thank you. Um, let's, what did I say we were going to do in my notes? I think I said we were going to do plank at the end of this. So let's do it. Let's do a one minute plank. You do it for as long as you can do it. I bet every single person watching this, whether you're live or next year or any time between, you can do a minute in plank. I guarantee it. So try it. If you can't, try more tomorrow. Right? So I'm going to do plank on my forearms. You can do your plank straight down on upper arms. Actually, it's a little bit um, it's a different because I'm having skeletal structure from my shoulders down to my wrist, right? When I'm on my forearms, I have this kind of triangle made, right? So I don't have a direct locking position, right? So it's a little bit more of a challenge, but again, we're going to do it. So, and 
go. Sorry, it's going to be dead silence for the next minute, or maybe I'll talk a little bit, but we are going for a minute. Tighten your core. Don't put your butt up in the air or sink your butt down, right? Nice level. You really, it's called plank for a reason. You want to be as straight as a board. You want to tighten that core. Believe it or not, we're already at 30 seconds. So that goes pretty quick, right? Do this while you're watching TV, you know, you're in between shows, right? Credits are rolling during commercial, whatever you happen to watch. Um, do it for a minute. We've got another 10 seconds. We've already gone a minute. So it goes really super fast. Let's do an extra 10 seconds just to make sure. Three, two, one. Good job. So if you did that in a minute, tomorrow do a minute and 10 seconds. Two days from now, I shouldn't say tomorrow, every other day. So Thursday, when you come back with me and you do a yoga class at six o'clock, um, you're gonna be able to hold that plank there as well and do those exercises. Um, next week, add five, 10 seconds every single week and you will be at two minutes in no time. Two minutes is a great goal. I have a plank challenge out there, I did it. Kind of put my money where my mouth is, did it. No problem, y'all can do it, I know you can. Uh, if it takes you five times, 10 times, you can do it, right? The goal is not to do it today, the goal is to do it. So then when I reach that goal, now I'm gonna push myself and go farther. There is never an end in sight, right? The, the goal is not the end, the goal is the, the, the evolutionary process you take to get there. It's cliche, but you know, I'm like that sometimes, right? It's the journey, not the destination, even though I'm super OCD and I need a destination to know where I'm going to know when I can move past the one I've gotten there. Anyway, sorry. Let's do our closing stretching routine and we'll wrap up. So everybody up, give yourself room, feet shoulder width apart, up to the ceiling. Nice stretch. Bend forward at the waist, reach to the floor, knees, ankles, toes, whatever you can reach. Walk forward into downward dog. Nice straight legs, keep your knees locked, keep your butt up in the air. You wanna to try to push your heels to the ground. If you can get your heels to the ground, bring your feet in closer and go higher. Dive down, roll up into cobra. Stretch that lower back, up into plank. We won't stay here too long, don't worry. Chin between your, chin your chest, head between your arms. Stretch that upper back. Walk it in. Stay on your tiptoes. I really mean that. Stay on your tiptoes the entire way. Wobbling is a good thing. Roll up nice and slow. All the way to the ceiling. And out to the walls. Good job. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. We're watching it later on down the road. Do me a favor, give the video a like. Uh, if there's something you want to see in a future class, message me. Thank you for those that have reached out. I really appreciate it. You gave me some good ideas, kind of helped bringing things together. So if there's something you want to see or something you want to do, message me and we will incorporate it in. Look for this, look for, we got a lot of stuff planned, right? Because none of us like to be cooped up. So we're going to do some remote virtual stuff, um, getting a Zoom session set up for the school where we can actually see each other as we're doing this. I might do that with dedicated smaller groups like my youth classes. If you're out there guys, I wanna see you all doing this with me. So get my youth group together here. Um, but again, you know, we all need to stay connected. Um, I think I said this in my video earlier today that I posted. If you haven't seen it, check out our Facebook page. I put a video up before. Uh, this is a community first for us. It's always been, right? Four years ago, whenever the heck we started this, 2015 was our first January 2015. Um, it was a couple of us and we just wanted to get together and swing some lightsabers and have some fun. And it grew and some left and some joined and some came back and there's a few that have been here almost the whole length of time. Uh, it's always been about just wanting to get together, right? We got a super diverse group and I'm really proud of that. All different levels, all different um, genres represented. We're all geeks in some form or fashion. I know you all are too or else you wouldn't be watching me doing this right now. Uh, thank you all right? 
it's a the LEDC ring is great. We've you know obviously the, the HEMA stuff and the historical European art stuff we love too. Um, this was the first thing that we pulled in um, when we started Columbus Saber Academy. So this will always be near and dear in my heart, and we will always do LED sabering because it's a great, accessible way to enter into the world of sword artists, and it's kind of a gateway for us. We always joke, everyone that has done LED sabering with us has also moved to one of the steel weapons that we teach: long sword, rapier, military saber, um, pike, side sword, you name it. Right, a bunch of things that the guys teach that we all teach. So. Thank you all again. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time today. Um, the video will be posted online soon, and I will see you on Thursday. Thanks, folks.